All right, Cam, today we're going to learn a new problem solving strategy called the BCA method. And we're going to learn how to construct a BCA chart. This is going to be a crucial problem solving skill from here on out in chemistry. So let's remind ourselves with a balanced chemical equation. So remember, due to law of conservation of matter, we need to use coefficients to balance the kind and number of atoms on each side of a chemical reaction. So if I have four hydrogens on the reactant side, I need to have four hydrogens on the ox product side. If I have two oxygens on the reactant side, I need to have two oxygens on the product side. We cannot mess with the fact that hydrogen and oxygen are both diatomic elements, so they come in pairs. We cannot mess with the fact that oxygen, when it comes in contact with hydrogen, will form water. That's because oxygen has a charge of minus two from its desire to get two valence electrons from somebody else to be an octet in hydrogen. You'd need two of them to get those two valence electrons. So we cannot mess with the way compounds actually form. We need to use coefficients in order to balance them. So what this really means that for every two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen is needed to react to produce two moles of water. That's what a balanced chemical equation means. Stoichiometry now, we're going to use those mole ratios that we've learned about from the balanced chemical equation and information about one compound in the reaction to determine information about any other compound. So let's look at an example of what a problem might look like. If 4.2 moles of hydrogen reacts completely with oxygen, how many moles of oxygen are needed? Remember that if there's no coefficient in front of oxygen, that means the coefficient is actually one. So I'm gonna set up what's called a BCA chart. BCA stands for before. How many moles of reactants and products do you have before the reaction begins? Change, this is the stoichiometry. How many moles of reactant are used up and how many product are formed? After is what is left over when the reaction is finished. So when you make your BCA chart, that's what BCA stands for, is before, change, after. Now, when we're doing BCA charts, only moles can be go into the BCA chart. We cannot compare grams to grams, liters to liters, particles to particles. Remember, when we're comparing two different compounds, we can only compare them moles to moles. Okay, so let's look again at our product. If 4.2 moles of hydrogen reacts completely with oxygen, how many moles of O2 are needed? So we're going to always start with before. Before is nothing's happened yet. It tells us we have 4.2 moles of hydrogen. It, whenever it says reacts completely with or there's excess oxygen, it'll say some sort of term that tells you we have plenty of oxygen. We write the word excess or the letters X and S is what you're going to see me do um, just to be lazy. And then before the reaction even happens, we don't have any products. So the products always initially get a zero. Now let's go with change. The reactants get a negative side. Both reactants get negative signs. And the products will get a positive sign. So all of the hydrogen will be used. It has a coefficient of two. 
I'm going to put minus 1x with oxygen because it has a coefficient of 1. I'm going to put plus 2x with water. The plus comes from the fact that we can't have less than 0. So we know we're going to produce waters. That's why it's a product, because we produce it. So it's minus for the reactants, plus for the products, coefficient, and then x. So notice, let's summarize that up. Reactants get a negative sign. Products get a positive sign. Put the coefficient for each substance down and then put an x. We know that all the hydrogen is going to completely react. Therefore, afterwards, we will have zero hydrogen. We have a bunch of oxygen left over because we've run out of hydrogen and we cannot create any more water from the oxygen. So we're just going to write excess. We don't need to know. And the value for x, so my equation becomes 4.2 minus 2x equals 0. So I can solve for x and I get a value of 2.1. like such. That's my change proportional to the balanced chemical equation, and that's what stoichiometry is. Okay, let's practice this one more time. How many grams of silver chloride will be precipitated at 0.46 moles of silver nitrate is reacted with calcium chloride. First thing we need to do is balance the chemical equation. This is to make sure that we have the same number and kinds of atoms on both sides of the chemical equation. So in this one, we're gonna write the initial amounts. It tells us we started with 0.46 moles of silver nitrate that's all going to be reacted so that tells us that we have plenty of calcium chloride before the reaction starts we have no products so the products are always zero before the reaction starts now let's check out the coefficients the mole ratio is for every two moles of silver nitrate i will react with one mole of calcium chloride to produce two moles of silver chloride and one mole of calcium nitrate Remember, the reactants get minus signs, the products get plus signs. Then you're going to have your coefficient. With the letter X. So the key equation is that first one with our given. 0.46 minus 2x equals 0. So 2x is equal to 0.46. x as a quantity is 0.23. So then you can use the solved value for x and plug it into all of your equations. And this is our answers. So silver nitrate is going to be all used up and turned into products. Therefore, afterwards, we will have zero. Calcium chloride, we're still going to have some left over because it's in excess. We will produce 2x of silver chloride. Remember, we already solved for x. x is a value that maintains throughout the problem. So 2x is 0.46, 1x is 0.23. This is what we're going to have in our container when everything's said and done. Now that's all that's left is I take moles of silver chloride and change it to grams of silver chloride. Using the molar mass from the periodic table of the elements. Now let me explain something. You might say to yourself, well, I can already do it the other way that you taught us, but this is a new problem-solving strategy that we're going to need for our next step. So we're going to use stoichiometry that we've already learned and that we're comfortable with, 
and we're going to learn a new skill from this so that we can do an additional type of problem that we have not learned yet. So we're going to practice using BCA charts for the rest of the unit.